You're fine. Yeah. I'm good at moving through skinny hot, hot areas. <coughs> Hello? Yeah. Well, I saw two inexpensive routers. I saw a used Bosch plunge router for $49.95. And then I seen a new skill, number 1810, that's going for $79.99. Okay, right, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I uh, own uh, uh, a portion of Hardwick's which is also known as Hardwick & Sons, Inc. And it was also known as Hardwick Swap Shop. And also Hardwick's Hardware by the people out, out there in Seattle. The store is 10,000 square feet and it's separated into three rooms. Two rooms are 4,000 each. And of course the tool room is, uh, existed before my father bought it in 19. 38 or started here in 1938. Well, Hardwick's amongst all of the woodworkers on the lake, Hardwick's is Mecca. Okay, I mean, that's uh, when I was younger, I'd save my money up knowing that I was going to spend all of it at Hardwick's. And, and you, you know, going to Hardwick's was like, you know, going to heaven. Jensen's has been going to Hardwick's since Hardwick's was founded. And that's where, that's where we get everything. I was stoked that they're going to still be online, you know, because I was, you know, what are we going to do? You know, especially what are the younger guys going to do? Because, you know, I'll be retired here in another six years or so. But, um, you know, it's, there, you can't buy what you can buy at Hardware's you can't get anywhere else. So, My relationship with Hardware's is, goes back a long, long time uh, with Dean and his brothers. My relationship was mainly with Lloyd, who was the, the store manager. One day he called me up and he said, Ken, we found a bunch of metric nuts and bolts that we didn't even know we had. And he goes, nobody over here knows anything about metric nuts and bolts, so do you want them? I said, well, how much? And he goes, I don't know, you tell me. So I went over there and he had literally hundreds of boxes that filled up the whole back of my truck with boxes. And I said, okay, Lloyd, what, you know, what do you want for it? And he goes, 100 bucks. So I gave him 100 bucks and we still have Hardwick boxes on the shelf from that, from that time on, and that was uh, about 15 years ago. It was, it was pretty clear that disasters came up, um, and you know, whichever one of us needed help, we seemed to get it. I went down with a four-way bypass. They protected my income, even though there was no provision to do that. For the millionth time someone said, oh, you got to go to Hardwick's, just even if you don't know what you need, go there and, and you'll probably find it. And I went and I, I literally walked down the ramp and had another one of those stopping experiences because I saw the desk. I had no idea what it was and I went up to the front desk and the, the super nice cat was up there and I said, there's a desk back there that I really love. He said, what's it look like? said, it's black and it's got a bunch of locking hardware on it. And he said, oh, Bill's desk. Um, so, you know, he came back and made sure that there was a sticker on it. I said, okay. Some things are just soulful and some things are more porous and collect more energy than others. And this is a thing that had clearly been used a lot. So I have a long relationship with Hardwick's and um, it's just one of those places you just you know stop in regularly just to see what's what's new, what's you know what's old, what, what has just come because it's both used and new tools you can just find you never know what you're gonna find there basically. Every jewelry student in Seattle um, Hardwick's is on their uh, supplier list because you're gonna find tools there that are gonna be useful to you whether or not they're jewelry tools. The other thing that's so special about Hardwick's is they just have things that nobody else has. I get lots of ideas just from, you know, from my environment and I'll just wander around that hardware store and I'll find something that I don't even know what it is. I feel like 
that, that's that's really what's missing with the, with the digital age is is that you just you don't you don't come across things the same way. You have to go looking for them specifically, and and you might come across something, but you're also not going to be experiencing it. So I, I just think there's a lot of inspiration that is lost, um, and there, and and so what's happening is people are just making other people's stuff. You know. So um, anyway, yeah, Hardwick's is super valuable. Well, yes, we have something here that we would nice would like to continue, but. I don't think it's going to happen, and there's many forces working against it. Um, most importantly is my customer base can no longer afford to live in Seattle. They can't afford the rents, uh, their property taxes, and they have to sell or just move out. The property tax situation uh, is, is really hurting a lot of people. They, they rezoned over there in, in the U District uh, for like nine stories. Dean has to pay a property tax like he's a nine-story building. And uh, the city fathers uh, have uh, pretty much ruined the, the uh, ability to do business uh, in Seattle. It takes all your energy out of you, thinking that all your, you have to do so much sales and then you're handing it over to somebody else. The tax increase, no, I can't afford that. They just want to browse around and walk. It's like, it's like being in a forest in a way because the forest, the as I'm lucky to have my home out in Edmonds, it's surrounded by about 20 trees, and what it does, it 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 buffers against the sound of the city and it, it's actually quiet. Here, it's the same kind of concept. It's like escape from the, the city. It's like going into a, a cathedral and having the Blessed Sacrament there. There's a quiet and a peace. There's a presence there that's just different, and that's what I wanted to create here. I, I'm thinking of the, the little people, and I'm one of the little people. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big shot. In fact, I don't make a lot of money in what I do. In fact, I sometimes I try to figure out how I can just barely get by. Or for the, just the sheer existence of the store, or my involvement over the years, I've put a lot of uh, energy into it. And I always wanted to make something special. 